Hey friends, today on Gardening with Creekside, we are going to do our weekly nursery tour and we have got some fantastic things to share with you. Of course, here we are, uh, middle-ish of April in North Carolina, Zone 7B, Dallas, North Carolina, just west of Charlotte. Beautiful things, right? Spring has sprung, the trees are waking up, everybody is awake and alive, and it is a wonderful time to be in the South for sure because of all this beautiful growth. So we're gonna walk through the nursery and I'm gonna highlight some of the fantastic plants and supplies, um, materials that you will need to have a fantastic garden this growing season. Now, this is a nursery tour. I cannot show you every single plant that we have in inventory. So if you don't see something that I don't talk about, it doesn't mean we don't have it. It just simply means that we are not showing it today just because there's some other things that we want to highlight to you. Here we are standing in front, obviously, of the greenhouse and we have two of our easy scape gardens here. If you remember last year, we partnered with Walters Gardens, who is the home of the Proven Winter Perennials. And we created these kind of recipe gardens that have a theme to them. So it's like three or four plants that solve a problem. Here we have, it's the easy skate for pollinators, gives you all the information. I just wanted to give you an update. So because like for pollinators and with these easy scapes, it is meant to give you kind of continuous color throughout the growing season. Right now, what is shining? That cat's pajamas nepeta. This has been in the ground uh, for not quite a whole year. We put it in in the summer of last year. When I say I've done nothing to this plant, I mean it. I did, I think, trim it back, like the dead foliage off way back in the winter time. But y'all, Look how beautiful these mounds are. Nepeta is a wonderful plant to have um, in your early spring garden, full sun. We did have some uh, honeybees on here. I think I scared them away, but beautiful, beautiful plant. Gorgeous color, nice and low and mounding. Um, easy peasy and it is since it is a cat mint, it is very fragrant, which tends to make it more deer resistant. Deer resistant, not deer proof. Um, then over here, this is the easy scape to resist deer. Again, resistant, not proof. What is blooming right now or getting ready to bloom is the Dianthus. This is paint the town fancy. It's a beautiful, nice, low, evergreen perennial. Fancy is really fun because it has the dark eye and then it comes out with that beautiful hot pink color. The serendipity alliums are wonderful. Alliums, of course, are like, you know, an onion, right? So this is an ornamental onion, nice big purple blooms on it. That will be the next bloomer. The, the Dianthus is kind of a sporadic bloomer throughout the growing season. Spring is when it really shines though. So then we would move to the Serendipity Allium. Nice and healthy, again, doing great. We have grasses. I am a huge fan of perennial grasses. This is a patchy rose. This whole area really filled in. It's not too tall, maybe that two to three foot um, height. Nice, more upright than it is wide. And then the summerific hibiscus. Y'all, look at this. Look at all of this growth popping out on the summerific hibiscus. This is the Oh, I always get, forget which one this is. Jerry, remember which one this is? It's the pink. It's a pink one. Um, but they... I can't remember, y'all. I'm sorry. But I do know that all... Like, we have three in here, and they are all popping out new growth. Your perennial hibiscus are extremely cold tolerant, um, so we certainly don't have to worry about it here. They come back from brand new foliage. That's why you cut them back big huge dinner plate sizes on them gorgeous and all of the summerific hibiscus you really want to look at um, basically it's the color like what color do you want and then there you go with that now moving into annuals because that really is the star of the show right now isn't it we come out of winter we're going into spring and we're like give me all the major color that i can possibly have we have got hanging baskets galore. They are coming in to their own. You saw us pot um, these up, some of them. We talked about it. This is the Supertunia um, Picasso in pink, and it is purple. That's what I said, mm -hmm, purple. Um, it is one of our most popular ones because it has such a really nice, unique bloom on it. Nice, 
rich purplish magenta center with that lime green edging on it it is beautiful we have these both uh, obviously in hanging baskets and the grande containers but whether you're looking for that dreamsicle caliber koa a super bell it's one of my favorites one of the easiest containers you can possibly do is take a hanging basket this 10 inch hanging basket take it out of the hanging basket plop it in a nice kind of a bigger size container whatever decorative container you have at your house that you like put that in there boom easy nice show to it then tropical sunrise right we got tropical sunrise and then the super bells yellow all of these are caliber koas super bells and just beautiful again these are some of our most popular ones that's why we put them in hanging baskets and as the heat continues these will just get bigger and bigger and trail over there are three plants in each of these containers they were just watered they're quite heavy so we're going to put them down now that was a good little arm exercise jenny did um, we also have the Proven Winners recipes. So this one is Living on the Edge. And with the recipes, these were developed by Proven Winners for plants that um, behave and coordinate really nicely together. So in this one, you've got um, like the Supertunia Royal Velvet, nice rich purple. Then you've got Supertunia Really Red and then our um, beloved Super Bell's Dreamsicle. So you've got those nice big bold colors does wonderful love them so i was telling you about the picasso picasso in purple we also like i said have them grandes but we also offer some of our petunias and super bells in gallons if you are looking to have it kind of an instant container like you're going to do a mixed arrangement right so this is wonderful for that it is also great with our petunias the super petunias to put it directly in the landscape so if you want more of an instant impact these gallons are the way to go because there are two plants in here um, and it just plus it makes more economical sense right you get a bigger plant um, for two of them than you would two grandes together and so these are wonderful to use when you come to shop we do this is where we have um, those easy scapes that we just showed you. So for the pollinators, we have the nepeta, we have the nephothia, we have the sedums right here. For to resist the deer, we have the dianthus, the alliums, and the hibiscus. So we try to make it easy for you when you come and shop. Now, come on in here to the greenhouse. Um, people were asking and we um, are growing this wonderful salvia this is playing the blues salvia from proven winners it is a magnificent pollinator attractor technically it'll be a perennial for us here in north carolina we got it a little late as far as it coming in to plant up in our grandes we are currently growing it but we did just bring in a shipment of plants from um, a fellow nursery in north carolina and they had to play in the blues in a gallon so we went ahead and grabbed some of those so for those of you who won't play in the blues i've got gallons available while supplies last and they are beautiful plants look at this look how nice and thick and full that plant is beautiful major pollinator attractor hummingbirds love it really kind of a nice a silvery um green foliage on it and it is a perennial in zones 7a to 10b so those are available one that i have been so impressed with this year this is um the brand new super Tunia mini vista scarlet for some reason i just do not remember it being this red last year but it is gorgeous and i love it i'm going to do some really bright bold hanging baskets on my front porch and this thing is going to be in there with some nice bright yellow so we're going to go red on our uh, on our front porch this year because i love this plant beautiful of course many vistas are a little bit more controlled um, constrained than a vista you still get the vigor and the flower power and the um, trailing habit of it flowers are just a little bit smaller but it's not as vigorous as your vistas um, fiber optic grass we have not talked about the fiber optic grass this year it is a really fun annual grass it is not going to be hardy um, well 8a to 10b so depending if you're a little bit warmer 
The thing that we have found with the fiber optic is if you put it in the landscape, well really landscape or container, you can do either one, but it does enjoy to be a little bit more on the wet side, right? So it doesn't do really well when it dries out. For me, I would not consider this like a drought tolerant. It likes it a little bit more um, damp and it's nice and kind of short, only 10 to 14 inches. But obviously it gets its name fiber optic, right? Because of the little tips on the end that are really fun. Would pair beautifully with the plum dandy. This is a wonderful accent plant. It will get to be um, 10 to 16 inches tall. So if you don't like coleus or you don't want coleus, you want something different than coleus, maybe coleus gets a little bit too big, but you like having the color of a coleus, but not the height and the, the massive size that they can get sometimes, Plum Dandy would be a really great option for you. Um, we've seen this, we first saw it at um, the display gardens with Proven Winners. Beautiful, just a beautiful, beautiful plant. Um, if you want something a little taller, we've got the Graceful Grasses Blue Mohawk. This is gonna be a really kind of an upright um, grass, very kind of um, thin and wispy. It almost reminds me of chives, but not as, not quite as thick. And obviously it's not a chive, it is a grass. Um, but this will give you some good height. It can get two to three feet tall. And then this one too will actually be a perennial for us. So it's a perennial in zones 5A to 9B. So you're gonna get your bang for your buck on that one. The climbing sweet potato vines, these are brand new this year. We have both the key lime and the black coffee. Now, if you're like me and you're looking at this plant and you go, oh, isn't it cute? It's nice and small. It's not gonna climb very much. I'll get a couple of these and put these together. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. These are some of the most vigorous plants, which is wonderful, right? Because it saves you money. So you can put this in on like a trellis. You can put it on an obelisk. You can put it on um, a fence to climb. You can put it in your mailbox. Anywhere you want it to climb, these will climb. If you want to pair them together to get a color contrast, you absolutely can. The reason that this is green is the new foliage. It will turn a nice black color. Um, I've got some fun plans for these this year in our gardens, but just know they are great. And also you could put it in a hanging basket and it would go up and it would go down also um, on that. We haven't talked about these because they've been growing up in production. These are our Angelonias. And Angelonias are a wonderful plant that will give you continuous color nonstop throughout the growing season. So this is Angel Face Wedgewood Blue. The Angel Face is the series, so all the Angelonias are called Angel Face. The Wedgewood Blue is a really beautiful bicolor of a white and a light blue. And you can see that she's already got some buds on her. This will be an upright plant. It's a wonderful um, thriller in a container and it does great in the landscape. If you're gonna put them in the landscape, we have two that are specifically for the landscape. Um, those are called the Supers. So it's Angel Face, this is Super Blue. And then we also have Super White. So this is a really nice, more of on the purple side, I would say, than a true blue. And then of course the white, it's just a beautiful pure white. But these will get 30 to 40 inches tall. Think a very nice companion planting for the Color Blaze Coleus. Big presence, massive flowers on it, but the supers are meant for either a really large pot or the landscape you will get your money's worth out of one grande on a super for sure, because they are just really vigorous. We still have some osteos left. We have the pink and the purple. Um, the double moon glow flew out of here. These are beautiful. And I love pairing these together, y'all. If you want a simple container, get equal numbers of these and just alternate them in a container or the landscape because they just complement each other really, really nicely. A beautiful plant. Limoncello, Supertunia Limoncello. This is a beautiful, soft yellow petunia. It is wonderful, of course, in the landscape, in a hanging basket, any kind of container, but limoncello is a really nice, soft color. So if you're going for, like for me, I could totally use this on the patio where I like to have whites and light colors because when we're out there at night, it stands out more. 
beautiful, beautiful shade of yellow with the limoncello. And you can see like in mass, like right here, how really nice and pretty that is. Um, just a great plant, again, for those kind of lighter colors. Um, there is a ton of things to go around in here. So I don't know which direction to go. Let's go maybe this way. This is where Jenny could do a, a garden tour for forever. I want to talk about um, vertigo grass because we have not talked about the graceful grasses vertigo. Um, if you have been following us for a while, you know that we use vertigo grass a lot in our landscape because it is an annual. It will not survive our winters. It is only hardy in zones. It says 8A to 11B, but like this year with our Arctic blast, it definitely would have cut it, uh, taken it out. I have tried it to leave it and it just doesn't work for us. Vertigo grass is a purple fountain grass and I know it's green right now, but we're in the greenhouse. It blocks out the UV light. So that's why it's green and not that rich, almost black. But vertigo gets huge. I would highly recommend you put it in the landscape and not a container. That's a different grass. Vertigo will get as tall as I am or bigger. The more water you give it, the bigger it is and it is massive. Makes a wonderful statement in your garden. And so like a lot of people will put these um, in maybe their landscape around their pool because you want more privacy in the summer around your pool, right? So these are great for that. I put them in my backyard gardens last year because I needed to fill in. I didn't have, um, my bones were not very big at that point, And so I needed to fill those in. Um, so vertigo is a wonderful grass for that. Here we have lots of beautiful Rakapuko M patients. We have all the colors. Um, we're missing a few right here, but I just wanted to show you if you have a shade garden, right? shade garden and you're like but i don't get any annual color that's where the rockapucos will come in this is a double impatient and this is wisteria wisteria is just a really beautiful soft white and lavender color these definitely do need the shade you can have some morning sun but here in the south do not give them afternoon sun they will just melt before your very eyes 10 to 20 inches tall um, and just nice and full. People think that they're roses sometimes. They're not. They are beautiful double impatience. Here we come into coleus land. <laughs> That's what I say because there's a coleus everywhere. We do have the new this year, the Color Blaze Mini Me Watermelon. This is going to be the shortest coleus that you're going to find. So nice and petite. I think it maxes out at like 18 inches. So that's nice. Um, your other color blaze coleus typically are going to get bigger, right? They have those beautiful, bold colors. Like this is Golden Dreams with Ridiculous, a beautiful complement with each other. Um, just a beautiful combination here. And these can do sun or shade. I've done them in both. You'll just notice a little bit of color variation if it gets full sun or if it gets more in the shade. But other than that, they are very um, vigorous and very happy. If you want to have a trailer, then there is the drop series, right? I say drop, it's kind of a family, it's not a series. So there's strawberry drop, there's chocolate drop, and then next year there's going to be a um, okay, strawberry, chocolate, cherry. There's gonna be a cherry drop, which is a little bit of a dip, deeper color these will go up and yes, they do trail and is really, um, it's fun. Again, I thought really coleus is going to trail. It does. It really does. Um, coming back over here with, we've got pentas right here. Now the Augusta lavender, this is not a lavender. This is a heliotropium. Just going to wing it on that one. Um, this is a great plant. If you have hot sun, more drought conditions, um, right now, it's just right. It's just now starting to bloom. Really nice, tiny little blooms. Lavender color with a white and yellow center. But the plant will get really thick and full. It has more of an open, kind of a whimsical habit to it. It's not tight and upright. It's more wide, and it does go up. It maxes out at like two feet in the landscape. Wonderful impact. We've had this in the trial garden for two years. It came back for two years for us um, because it is a perennial in zones 9A to 11B, where 7B, go figure. Um, but you can just see how it'll, like this one has 
like a nice, almost like a verbena look to it. Really pretty. This is something different, right? A different look to it. Really beautiful colors. And especially if you have a cottage garden style, whimsical, this would be a great one to use. It was in the top 10 of the performance at the NC State Trials. So um, different universities will do um, plant trials. And so this is a top 10 performer for all season. It's not gonna be just a spring or the late summer. It's an all season plant. So this is a wonderful one to have. The hummingbirds are here. We have them. They have been here for almost a week now. If you're looking to attract your hummingbirds, you got to get Vermillionaire. This is my number one plant to attract hummingbirds. Not only do hummingbirds love it, but so do pollinators. Bumblebees and honeybees will be covering this plant. Definitely get this one plant. If you only buy one plant to attract hummingbirds, this is the one you want. Um, you can put it in a container or the landscape and it'll get nice and full. Again, this is when you look at it now, it's kind of small. Put it in the landscape, it'll show you what's going on with that. Um, my shade people, again, if you're looking for some color, you cannot go wrong with both the Double Up series of begonias and the Surefires. These can do sun or shade. I have grown them in full sun and I have grown them almost in complete shade. And um, they do really well in both growing conditions. And so you want to have color in your shade garden, then this is it. Put it in there. You will not be, um, you will not be upset about that at all. Now. Talking about we had the plant delivery yesterday. We got some um, elephant ears. Look at this. How fun is that? And it, it's holding the water. There we go. This is Regal Shields. Beautiful, nice, dark color on it. Big leaves. This is an alocasia, upright, um, gorgeous new growth on it. If you're wanna look at, for a specimen in your garden for the summer around a pool in a container, this would be a great one to do. So this is Regal Shields. And then right over here, next door, look at this. I mean, they're massive. I'm not even gonna pick that up. But this one is the Caladora, we're gonna say. That sounds right, go for it. Um, it too is an alocasia, upright, right? So it does that upright habit on it, really nice. Gr again, great specimen in the landscape or the container. I'm not sure on my zones on it, so I would have to double check on that. The Chick Charms, these are the Sempervivums, and they have been flying out of here. With a unique stone, we got, um, and we got them all unpacked this week. So we put these little succulent planters right here. So they're coming, there's a couple of different colors, but this truly is like the mini succulent planter. So you can do this, right? You can grab either like one of the living on the edge, or right, not living on the edge. <laughs> That's the hanging basket, living canvas, and you know, take it out of the pot, right? And pot it down in here. My little round pot's a little bit bigger. Stick it in there, boom. Instant little container. This would be great, y'all, for um, teacher gifts because into school is coming up. Mother's Day is coming up. So you can take the container, you can pick pick a succulent, right? You can either do um, a trio or you could do a single one. Take it in there, plant it in there, and boom, there you go. Now, the chick charms, all of them are cold hardy. They are perennials for us. They can go up to a zone, cold hardiness of a zone three. So definitely don't have to worry about it in the winter time. You may just wanna watch it as far as like if we get super super wet or just make sure that it is well draining because they don't like to be wet this is mint marvel and y'all there are tons of little babies in here tons of them so you can easily divide those so we've got lots of the chick charms both as singles trios we've got them um, as the bowls we've got them as the ovals great plant for sure uh, now i think let's mosey on out to Let's go this way, right? Why not? We've got tons of plants. This is the time of year um, when we do our nursery tours. Jerry and I have to be a little bit more like intentional because 
there are so many things that we could hit um, and talk about because everything is popping, everything is coming out. It really is a great time just to, to put just about everything into the ground. It's wonderful. Now, when you come to your local garden center, this is what you need to do. Not only are you looking for your plants, you're looking for your supplies to ensure that you have a really happy, healthy garden. Um, we have the Proven Winners Potting Soil. If you've watched me do my containers, this is the only potting soil that I use. So, Proven Winners Potting Soil is available. The Land and Sea Compost from Espoma. We have pallets and pallets and pallets of this. Wonderful for the landscape, adding into the nutrition of your plants. Then we also have the black gold. And with the black gold, this is actually made by the same manufacturer that makes the Proven Winners Potting Soil. They make all of our professional mixes that we use. We love this black gold um, products. This is gonna be available across the country. A lot of times you'll find them in like Ace Hardwares. So if you have, if you see something and it's a black gold product, it's good. So it's gonna be more widely available than say just like the Proven Winners Potting Soil. We really focus on three things here, right? Two, we have two right here. One, this is the natural outdoor planting mix. This is one of those that you can absolutely use to um, plant directly in. It amends your soil. Like it is great to add to your soil and amend your soil. Then you have the raised bed potting mix. If you're looking like I had Miss Pat came and they're going to put in this uh, raised vegetable garden, this is what you put in, right? So you put strictly in that. You can plant directly in that and it is OMRI listed organic. So definitely certified organic and you can absolutely use that. Aquapots galore. We've got them. Come pick. You can see holes, so you can see things that have been sold. We need to condense those, but everything that's turned upside down is an aqua pot. And then our strawberry succulent planters, this whole pot, these, I don't know, six pallets were all full. We're coming down. So if you're interested in a succulent planter, you need to come on out here and get one because with our aqua pots and all of our uh, planters from michael carr it's not a quick turnaround like i can't just turn around and order it and it'll be here next week like we have to order a year in advance because they ship directly from vietnam so it's a process so if you have your eye on something come out here and get it it is not a sales tactic it is just the truth right so because if it's gone it's gone and i can't get one until probably a year from now all right now here we are right we're coming into spring. We are entering into the growing season. Your plants are waking up. They need food. Think of a bear when it comes out of hibernation. It goes out to try to find something to eat, right? Same thing with your plants. This is the perfect time of year. If you only fertilize your perennials, trees, and shrubs once a year, now is the time to do it. Out of winter, going into spring, everything's waking up. Quick recap, because I know sometimes it can be confusing biotone this is your starter fertilizer so when you're planting when you're putting the plant in the ground you want biotone 30 days after that if you wanted to encourage new growth then you could come back with some other um, fertilizers now we have holly tone holly tone obviously is good for holly trees but it is good for acidic loving plants here in the south what does that mean that means your azaleas your gardenias your camellias a lot of your evergreens that is holly tone okay plant tone if you only buy one fertilizer get plant tone plant tone i say is a swiss army knife of fertilizers it will do everything it will do annuals vegetables trees shrubs when in doubt use plant tone you could buy this I could use this by like the pallets because this is such great all-purpose slow release fertilizer and then the last one that we really kind of um, encourage people to use is the rose tone now obviously rose tone is kind of like holly tone like the name tells you what it's good for right so it is great for roses but beyond that the next big thing for us here in the south hydrangeas so when you have a woody flowering shrub a lot of them have the same nutritional needs so a rose and a hydrangea have a lot of the very similar nutritional needs rose tone is great for that proven winners at spring meadow this is what they recommend for their hydrangeas is rose tone so even if you don't have a rose in your garden but you've got a lot of um, hydrangeas you need rose tone and this is a great time to do it helps encourage that new growth and especially if you have panicle hydrangeas or a smooth hydrangea that blooms on new growth 
you want lots of new growth because that is going to give you lots and lots of beautiful blooms this growing season. And then of course, we have the proven winners, both the water soluble, these are for your annuals. So the proven winners, the water soluble, you mix it up in your watering can. Then we have the time release, which is my mama calls it the shake and bake. So you sprinkle this in, slow release fertilizer for your annuals. We have the proven winners. If you're looking to do some basic drip irrigation for some containers, this WaterWise kit has everything that you need um, and it is wonderful. My folks who deal with Japanese beetles, <laughs> which is unfortunately becoming a large portion of the country. This is what we use. This is my fertilome and is a tree and shrub drench. It lasts for one full calendar year, 12 months. So what you do is you follow the directions on the back and depending on the size of the plant, you mix this up with a gallon of water and then pour it around the base of the plant. This is the number one thing that we use to prevent Japanese beetles from destroying our plants. If you don't have Japanese beetles, then you are blessed because you do not understand how Japanese beetles can literally defoliate a plant in a matter of a couple of days. They wreak havoc on plants. There is no natural predator. It is really hard to go out there, and especially if you have big areas, um, to hand pick these bugs off every single day. So this is a wonderful systemic, goes into the plant, the plant soaks it up, we love this it has been really successful for us and it has not harmed our beneficial bugs so we have that available here at the nursery now let's talk about some of the things that came in yesterday um, some of them we refreshed we restocked puffer fish y'all look how gorgeous this hydrangea is so puffer fish is new on the market this year beautiful foliage here so there's a panicle three to five feet tall, really massive blooms, and they'll do these fun little tufts on the end. So we got a whole new um, selection of puffer fishes have come in, the uh, <laughs> fairy trail brides, the cascading hydrangea. These are not new that have come in, but I just wanted to show you how much they have flushed out. In fact, I see buds. We have buds right here. This is going to be like a four by four trailing over. If you have watched our videos, you know that mine personally in the garden took a big hit with the Arctic blast. These we brought in from another nursery. Clearly they were more protected than what I had <laughs> mine, but y'all there's buds all over them. They bloom on new and old growth. So I'm kind of like wah, 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 as far as mine in the garden, but it is what it is and we're going to go for it. Quick fire fab. This is going to be one of the earliest, if not the earliest, um, blooming panicle hydrangea. Really nice, um, moderate size on it. It's not going to be crazy. I mean, it's six to eight, like a limelight can be even taller than that. So it's kind of that in between kind of that teenager size, um, beautiful creamy white that turns to a lovely pink, even here in the South brand new on the market this year. This is the Invincible Sublime. I'll show that tag to Jerry. So this is a smooth hydrangea. So smooth hydrangeas bloom on new growth. So if you're familiar with Annabelle's, it's in that same family. Okay, those are all smooth hydrangeas. The Invincible Sublime, obviously by the name of it, it is a beautiful lime color. This is a color specific hydrangea. The pH will not affect it, right? So a lot of your macrophylla hydrangeas, the big massive, what we think of traditional hydrangea, color depends on your soil, not this, okay? So it's gonna be a beautiful lime color, zones three to nine, sun to part shade. It will be three and a half to five feet tall and wide. This is one that you would prune um, coming out of winter because you wanna encourage new growth. For us here in North Carolina in the Piedmont, we have found that our Invincibles do the best where they get lots of good morning sun, six hours, seven hours of morning sun, but give them a break in the afternoon. Take them out of the heat and the sun in that late afternoon because they just seem to melt and don't do well. So if you put them in the right conditions, they will be stunning and they will be gorgeous. Um, let's see, oh, while we're back here, let's talk Clematis. So clematis, clematis, tomato, tomata, whatever you say, I know what you're talking about. Y'all look at this. This is clematis season for sure. Um, so we have got, if you want a nice dark, rich 
kind of a burgundy maroon that is Wester plate that is blooming gorgeous color <clears throat> excuse me on that it's doing really nicely then this beautiful uh, bicolor pink hang on I'm trying to find my tag here this is I can't see um, oh bees jubilee so the bees jubilee massive blooms on it massive look at this like look at my hand gorgeous now clematis is a wonderful vine yes people will plant them with roses you can plant them with other shrubs they will not overtake those plants so you absolutely can do some companion planting and then there's a beautiful white right here and this is i see a tag let me tell you what this one is this is going to be jillian blades so if you want a nice beautiful pure white then this would be it covered in blooms buds rather sorry has a little bit of a pink vein to it so these are gorgeous now we got in a whole fresh stock of the butterfly bushes we have basically two series here we have the Miss series. We have Miss Molly and Miss Violet, Miss Pearl. Pearl obviously is white. Miss Violet, Jerry can show you that beautiful um, bloom on that. These are a little ahead of time because they did come from down east. So um, probably your butterfly bushes are not blooming right now or getting ready to bloom. But Violet is a nice size and color. The Miss series is gonna be a moderate size in that four-ish foot range, right? full sun you need full sun for your um, butterfly bushes and then we have the pugsters pugsters are nice and petite two to three feet tall in the south we tend to go a little bit bigger about three feet so the pugster blue and the pugster amethyst so we have a beautiful selection of those and then we got brand new on the market this year is a new abelia from proven winners this is trace amigos and right so it has those three beautiful colors the new foliage will have a little bit more of an orangey uh, red tint to it and then it really turns to a beautiful variegated with a cream and green abelias are wonderful evergreen shrubs here in the south um, really nice beautiful um, late color on them as far as your blooms does great so you've got trace amigos you've got a uh, kaleidoscope and so these are all abelias doing great now i want to run over here real quick we're going to talk about unique stone oh on the way petite roses of sharon people were asking for these so we grabbed them so we have little kim and we have little kim red these are not going to be giants right these are only going to be three to four feet tall and wide so nice and petite you don't have room for a giant chiffon well you can take a little kim like i said we've got them in the red and then little kim is more of is a lighter color so those are great why jillias y'all you need to come snap these things up these are beautiful plants gorgeous plants you've got this one that is blooming this is the let me get to it to the tag um, wine and spirits beautiful creamy white flowers gorgeous then that is wine shine i believe right here nice rich foliage yes midnight wine shine and then of course vino verde that i love for the variegated foliage they are deciduous y'all don't let that fool you <laughs> we were just listening to a podcast we're like really like we're not outside a ton in the winter so if it's deciduous it's okay right we spend most of our time outdoors and here in north carolina we have such a long growing season when these came to us they were completely dormant so even this time of year this is what you're going to get they have been sitting here for i don't know six weeks and so they have naturally come out so in the spring this is what you're going to get right this is what you can expect this time of year gorgeous plant Get your honeys out here, people. Yeah, it's not a thing. It's like a a, um, a deciduous shrub. Like right. This is ever changing. It is ever changing. You, you get multiple things out of it. Where like an evergreen, which is great, but it's always the same. Right. This U always looks the same. Right. It is an evergreen, and everything has its place. We're not one camp or the other. But this U, it is what it is. It's not going to change. The Wygelias and other deciduous shrubs are constantly changing. So that was a great point. 
So the girls are restocking. Um, we had a fantastic day yesterday. Um, you may have seen some holes in there, so they are restocking. But I want to take you over to Unique Stone because we did get everything unboxed. It is here. If you had a special order, it is here. Come on over come pick it up um, but we did also have a lot of beautiful things that I ordered in for the retail portion of the nursery so we're gonna kind of hit those real quick <gasps> look at all the little phones they're gone oh this is great so as I joke this is the only deer that I want to have in my garden this is the resting phone really nice and sweet cute right and then as we just go through there are tons of options for you so if you want something small we had some folks um, actually visiting from canada yesterday they were down um, to visit with their daughter who is in school down here in the south obviously they can't take a fox or a forest gnome or a bistro table or a galloway urn home with them but they can take a gecko so this little sweet little garden gecko roll it up in your t-shirt your pajamas throw it in your suitcase boom off you go so we have something for everyone whether it's depending on your budget or <laughs> the space in your garden we have them um, like these sweet little owls this is harry harry is just lost the tag harry is nice and sweet and petite cute to tuck in i mean you could even put it in a container like as a little accent put it in your garden beautiful cute little guy and then we have hootie so i love all the names with these guys so hootie is more on a stand um and is a little bit taller a little bit more heft to him right there um the chickens <laughs> we got chickens people um we've got miss prissy we've got a couple of roosters this is brewster Brewster is a little bit ornate. Um, if you see, there might be some coffee beans, you know, tucked into these because remember that's the burlap bags they send us. Um, they're packed in there. So lots of urns, the Charleston Basket Boys. These are the rough tapered um, urns, which I love. I think they're beautiful. They're classic. They're easy. There's three shapes, because I mean sizes, so you could easily pair them together. So you have a small, medium, and large would be a beautiful arrangement. Whether you wanted to put annuals or perennials in here, group them together, they would be stunning. I love this container. So if y'all don't buy them, guess where they're gonna end up? Jerry's like shooting me darts with his eyes behind the camera. Uh, Galloway urns, these have been going out. Um, and so Galloway urns are really popular. Thank you, Laura. And so really popular. People really do like them. They make a statement in your garden. Um, they are hefty. So if you want to buy a Galloway urn, you bring your truck. It would be great. If you had a truck, that way we can load it up for you. Put one in a hatchback. Put one in a god bless them so it is two pieces so the top piece is not that unbearable right so you can easily um, a str one strong person or two average people can easily pick this up the quote problem the heft is the base because it is solid at the base and this base is really really heavy um, but where there is a will there is a way Florentine bird baths. So we've got some beautiful Florentine bird baths, various colors. Um, again, two pieces come apart. I have this. This is what I have my succulents, my sempervivums in as a mixed container. And then some cute little ones. So if you don't have um, a space, my mama has this Camelot. Nice, petite little bird bath. Tucks really nicely into your shade gardens. And then bashful beddies. We only have a few of the bashful beddies. Evidently, there was an issue with making the bashful beddies. Um, and so we didn't get quite as, as the number that we ordered. So this is what I have. And hopefully when we have our August order, I'll be able to get some more um, of the bashful beddies. Lots of different planters. We've got the hummingbird planters because those are huge, really popular, both in the rectangle and the squares. And then these are all the ones that are sold. So if you come to the nursery and you see the green tape on this side of the fence, path right here, these are all sold. Um, and so these are ready for you to come pick up. And then last but not least, beautiful Savannah urns. So these are all available for purchase. Two pieces um, make a beautiful statement, whether you put them in your shade garden or your sun garden love these savannah urns and i've got them in all colors the stone the green 
the light walnut, wa light walnut, dark walnut, it is available. So lots of things happening. If you're not close to Creekside, we'd love to have you come visit, but reach out to your local garden center. Go see what they have. If you're still buried in snow, hang on. Spring is coming, I promise. As always, thanks so much for joining with Creekside. Y'all have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.